If you're sharing your all important files with suppliers and clients using email, well you know it can lead to big problems. What if you get your recipient wrong? Do you want to try and recall that message? What if the file is too big to fit on your email? What then do you use to share that file? All of these are common scenarios when it comes to sharing files, but did you know that we can use Microsoft Teams to resolve these problems? Yes, you can create a dedicated Microsoft team that you can share with your particular suppliers or clients and use it to drop your files into that they can have access to. Alongside that, even have conversations preventing a need to send all of those emails every single day. Keep all your communications in one single place in Teams. And before we dive in, I'd like to give a shout out to today's video sponsor, Blue Tally. Blue Tally provide leading IT asset management software that can improve the way that you manage your IT assets. And of course, if you liked today's video, hit that like button and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to find more great content like this that helps you use the tools you already have in much better ways. So before we get into the mechanics of creating this team, let's let you know about a few ground rules. Because Microsoft Team provides a great place to share files, but its permission model can be a little open. What I'm gonna be showing you today is granting access to third parties into Microsoft Teams. That provides access to both read and write and edit files. That means that you can't restrict them, at least using this scenario, to just have read-only rights to your files. Now in some cases, that can be a deal breaker, but for some, you may be happy that the client can actually edit these files in place in Teams, and that's exactly what they can do. Also be aware that when you add a third party into a particular Microsoft team, all of the existing content will become visible to them. Yes, channels, files, and posts will become visible to that third party client that you're adding in. So take great care when you consider adding third parties later in Teams to ensure there's nothing in there that you wouldn't want to have a third party that you're inviting seen inside of Teams. And of course, you need to ensure that you can share content in Teams with third parties. If in doubt, reach out to your IT team and you can find out more and ensure that Teams is set up for external sharing. I'll also add some additional information in the video description below to find out how you can also share content in Teams. So let's now head into Microsoft Teams and create a brand new team to share files with our clients. So you've joined me in Microsoft Teams and we're gonna create a brand new team to store all of the files that we're gonna to wanna to share with our external stakeholders. Remember, it's really important to contain a separate team as your container to ensure you don't accidentally overshare your files with others. It's really important to create a dedicated team, maybe for a particular client or supplier that you're working with. But let's go ahead and go and create a new team by clicking on the plus icon, select Create Team, and give your team a name of your choice in description. What I also recommend here is just noting it's used for file sharing or sharing purposes to make it clear to your team it's only used for that rather than internal purposes. I'm also gonna leave the privacy as a private team and then I'm gonna go ahead and select the Create button. I'll now create our team, but before we get carried away, we need to also add in my internal colleague. Megan is supporting this project. And internally, I wanna make sure Megan can add the relevant files folders and check it all out as well. So what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and search for Megan's name and bring Megan in for our internal directory. I can also set whether Megan is a member or an owner of this team, allowing Megan to then control access and maybe even invite additional external parties. But I'm quite happy that I'm gonna be the only owner. I'm gonna leave Megan as a member in our team. Select add, and now that's done but our team is looking pretty empty. Now I generally recommend go and create the content that you wanna share with your other party. So to do that, go to the Files tab and you can begin to create new folders by using the new button, selecting Folder and create folders that are gonna organize all of your content, making it easy for the other party to get hold of those files. Let's take a short break from Teams and consider IT asset management because your IT assets are probably pretty high priority in the company you work for. And if you're unsure where your assets are, who they're allocated to and the state of those devices, it's probably time to check out IT asset management software. And that's exactly what today's video sponsor Blue Tally provide. Because if you need a way to improve IT asset management and build on top of Microsoft Intune and Entra, there's even a free demo that you have access to to have a play with to see how it can improve the way that you manage your assets. So thanks again to Blue Tally for sponsoring today's video. And you'll find more information on them in the video description below. So let's dive back into Teams and continue on with setting up our portal.
So we've now added a couple of folders and a couple of files, all within our Microsoft team. But also, I'm gonna do is go to the post tab and I'm gonna start a post and I'm gonna add a post in here, welcoming everyone into the team. We can do that via an announcement by clicking the post type, change it to an announcement. Now you can give it a headline and a message to welcome in the people that you're gonna invite into your team. Make it look super professional as well. With that done, let's go ahead and click on the post button and post it into our team. Now we're all set, we've got our files and folders. We also have a nice post to welcome people into this team. You could even go further by adding a OneNote notebook and more. But at this point, we're ready to bring in our external parties. And how does that work? Well, much the same as when we added Megan, our internal party. What we'll do with the role as a team owner is go to the freed up menu next to my team name, select add member, and now we can type in the email address of the external party. That could be a Microsoft 365 account, Gmail, Outlook, or other third party account. Now I'm gonna invite someone that's already had access to our environment before. But again, what I need to do is type in the external party's email address to find them in a drop down. And there we go. Let's go ahead and select this account. And here you can see that you can't give member or owner rights. No, adding a third party will always give them this guest label, meaning they're limited on what they can do. Let's go ahead and click on add and now invite that third party. But the big question is, what does it look like to the other party? Well, let's go and have a look. And I'm now logged into the other account to show you that experience. You can see the account received an email to have their team shared with them. They can easily click on open Microsoft Teams and see details on the team itself, the title and also description, making it really important the way that you define that team name and the description as well. Now, once the individual clicks on open Microsoft Teams, they'll also see this inside of Teams. And following that link has taken us into Microsoft Teams. We can now from the left hand side, click on Teams, and we can see that Project Zero for Joe Blogs is now appearing, even with a new icon. Select General, and we can now see the posts that we created welcoming everyone into the team. The third party can very easily react to it, and also even reply in line as well, meaning you can now have conversations in posts that don't need to actually take place over email. Use Teams to keep all of your communications in a single place. But even better, you can click on files using this account and they will also see all files and folders that you've added into that team. Yes, the legal files for review and more. And of course, if that third party wanted to open this non-disclosure agreement, they can left click and make changes using their own account. Yes, remembering that they have the ability to both add, delete and edit content in this team. So a small change here can be made just to the formatting of this document. And you'll see that when a document is closed down, it's also synced straight back into Microsoft Teams for the other party as well. So as simple as that, you've now created a team that allows external sharing and brought them in and also shared files with them in a secure way. Yes, no more sharing files over email for you. But you may have a question, what happens when the third party changes role or leaves the other company? and you'd like to remove them from your Microsoft team. Well, you can absolutely do that. If you're a team owner, well, all you then need to do is click onto the freed up menu once again next to your team name, select manage team, and under the members and guests here, you'll see who we've invited. Megan's my internal colleague, but the other account here, as we can see, was a guest. To remove access to that party, just go ahead and click on the X to the right hand side, and no more access is granted to that third party. Yes, they instantly lose access to the team and all files contained within them. That's a simple way you can remove your guests after you provided access to ensure you stay on top of your security. But again, to add those individuals in, well, it's once again as simple as a freed up menu, add member and typing in that email address. So now you've got a team you can share with others securely you won't have to worry about sharing those important files over Outlook anymore. So there you go. We've now got a Microsoft team that you can use to share and collaborate with your clients and suppliers. Remembering those all important points that the client can see all content inside of that team, files and posts, as well as also having edit rights to all of your files. It's also really important to monitor, maintain access and remove those third parties as and when required.
Now, of course, I just wanted to also give a shout out and a thank you to today's video sponsor, Blue Tally, who provide leading IT asset management software. If you want to find out more, there's more details in the video description below. But thanks again for sponsoring this video, Blue Tally. Other than that, if you like this video, hit that like button, not forgetting to hit that subscribe button to help you use the tools that you already have in much better ways. Otherwise, well, I'll be seeing you in the next one.